So when you think about the book of Revelation, what comes to your mind? And I'd be willing to bet that many of us in this room automatically think that Revelation is all about predicting the future. And while certainly Revelation has some things to say about the future, it does so not at the expense of the present. What we've gotta be reminded of is that Revelation was written to the church that was being seduced and persecuted by the world in which they lived. Revelation does have some things to say about the future, but it also says some things about the present that we dare not miss. And Matt Proctor pointed this out so well last night that in chapter one, verse four, right out of the gates, we see that this is a letter that is written to the church. Look at it with me in chapter one, verse four. It says, John, to the seven churches that are in Asia, grace to you and peace from him. What we cannot stress enough is that the church is what was on Jesus' mind and on John's heart. And after this glorious demonstration of who Jesus is in chapter one, Jesus clears his throat and he says, John, write down what you see, put it into a book and send it to the church because before I start predicting the future, I've got some things to say to the church. And one of the very first things that Revelation reveals to us is that uh, uh, the church doesn't have a vision as much as Jesus' vision has a church. Have you noticed that there are a lot of opinions floating around nowadays about the church? And I'm not talking about the culture. I'm talking about what we have a tendency to say about ourselves what we say about that other church, what this denomination says about that denomination, what this tribe has to say about that tribe, and not all that is all bad. The only point is there's so many opinions that are swirling around about the church that we can't hear the only opinion that matters. Jesus' opinion on his church is the primary voice that we should be listening to, and this is what he gives us in Revelation chapter two and three. I, I love what Eugene Peterson says in his book, Reverse Thunder. He says, many people wanna go from Jesus straight to heaven without going through the church, but Revelation two and three says otherwise. Now he's not saying that our salvation is tied to church involvement or attendance. He's just simply making an observation about the book of Revelation, that Jesus is revealed in chapter one, that the new heaven and the new earth is revealed in chapters four through 22, and sandwiched right there in the middle of it is the messy, imperfect bride of Christ. And she is described in an interesting way. She's described as a lampstand. Don't you think that's an interesting metaphor for the church? It's not exactly a picture of stability. Lampstands are easily toppled. They're not meant to illuminate everything. They are meant to illuminate someone. There are more than seven churches in Asia Minor at the time, but Jesus only chooses to address seven of them because seven represents perfection or completion. And so these seven churches represent all churches everywhere across all time, including yours and including mine. And the thing that we learn is that no church escapes the observing eye of Jesus Christ. 